Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor, and I'd like to quickly show you why I think you should choose NoSQL databases over relational databases. Not all the time, but when they match perfectly for your situation, which is more often than you might think. Now, first, we need to talk about what it means when someone says choosing NoSQL or using a NoSQL database. There's actually four different categories or families of NoSQL databases that all fall under the NoSQL banner, but they optimize different things and they have different advantages and weaknesses. So we've got key value stores, which are kind of like uh, durable dictionaries more or less. We've got column val uh, family stores. We've got document databases which will let you store hierarchical information. Typically this is implemented with a JSON document but it doesn't really matter. It's just you know hierarchical flexible um, schemas. And then there's graph databases which are great for relationships. But if you want to think about what kind of database people are choosing when they're choosing NoSQL as a general application database, that's usually document databases. So when I say why do you want to choose NoSQL, let's talk about really why do you want to choose some kind of document database. This could be MongoDB, could be Couch, could be uh, Raven, those types of things. Okay, so what are some of the key benefits to document databases? Well, there's obviously speed. There's been a lot written about how fast these databases are. And let's just, for the sake of this discussion, assume that at least they're at least as fast as relational databases, but I can tell you they are faster. Um, they are very good at horizontally scaling out because of some of the things that they give up. So uh, that's part of the speed story. They're often open source, uh, which makes them free. So the price is definitely cheaper than, say, SQL Server or Oracle, which is not too bad. And there's a lot of flexibility with the flexible schemas that they have. But there's another one that often gets overlooked, and that's actually simplicity. The simplicity that a document database brings to your application. Apps that use document databases often have fewer tables, fewer relationships, and a lot less object relational impedance mismatch because the way you design your documents very often matches the way that you work with them in your application. So I think this, once all the other criteria are met, that it's sufficiently fast, it's not too expensive, things like that, I think simplicity is actually one of the most important benefits to why you might choose NoSQL. So I want to give you a concrete example. Let's take Learning Line. Learning Line is developmenter's online learning platform. And the lessons in there are what are referred to as tasks. And tasks are, you know, about an hour. You can think of them as like a set of lessons you might go through, kind of like a lecture and exercises, things like that. And now a task is made up of a bunch of small activities that you do. You can vote on these activities. You can complete these activities. People can save notes and favorite them, uh, both at the task and the activity level. So there's a lot of little pieces going on. So if we take a uh, learning line and just focus in on a simplified version of the task, which is like a single lesson, we come up with a fairly ugly looking um, schema. So here's the Entity Framework version of how that would look, and this is the Entity Framework Designer. You can see that we have tasks, tasks have activities, activities have um, types, they have votes, tasks have votes, you can start an activity so we know that you've begun it and record how long it takes you to do it and tell you things like that. There's tags, there's all sorts of stuff, and there's a lot of pieces that are missing. So the real story is actually more complicated, but let's just focus on this particular story. Here it is a little bigger, just to show you exactly all the pieces. So there are 15 tables with 19 relationships between them here, just to display the task page. And that is super complicated, it's just really hard to change, it's hard to scale, there's a lot of problems with this. So how might it look if we were going to redesign this in a document database? Well, what you'll see is that there are a lot less top-level entities. There's still uh, some classes in here. So we have a task, you can see, and the task has an activity, and the activity has a type, and it might have a vote, and the task can also have a vote. We also have a users, and we have completions, all these things, but the stuff with the box, the task, the user, and the completion are what you might think of as the tables. Those are the only things that we view in our database as a top-level item and manage them. Back here, 15. Over here, those three. So it's much, much simpler from a, a database perspective. So here's how this looks in MongoDB. We've got a task. It contains an array of activities. The activity contains an array of votes and things like that. Uh, the task also contains an array of tags. And all this stuff can be indexed and queried super fast, right? But look how much simpler it is. So here's the thing. 
if you're considering working with a document database and you're going to your team and there's some resistance or like, well, maybe this is not really for us. And I hear those things are weird. They don't have a schema that freaks me out. Um, or maybe you're talking to your manager or your boss and saying, look, our app would be so much nicer to work with if we could switch to MongoDB or something like that. And you need something to convince them. I think this is the fundamental question. You just need to sh look at those two pictures and decide, would you rather juggle 15 tables and 19 relationships or three collections with a couple of interrelationships? And which of those two do you think would be simpler to maintain and evolve over time and understand, bring on new people, all that kind of stuff. So once you verify that the speed, the price, all that stuff is right, I think one of the main selling points of docking databases and why you care and why you should start using them is they bring great simplicity to your application. Here you go. So that's it. Hopefully that was interesting and helpful for you. Uh, you can find my blog and my Twitter and my Google Plus online here. Uh, drop by Learning Line and take some classes. We're going to have a uh, MongoDB and other NoSQL topics in there as well. So, hope you enjoyed the talk.